My name is Spencer Bucknam. We're out here at Bunt Willow Raceway uh, testing the GR Cup car for this year's season of the Toyota GR Cup North America Series. I'm racing with Precision Racing LA, uh, formerly LA Honda World. Coming off of a championship win last year, we're trying to keep the momentum up and, and see what we can do in this new series. So I started in go-karts when I was five years old and only did a couple years of karting and then uh, transitioned into sim racing mainly. So did that from nine to 14 years old. Just got super comfortable driving, learning every track here in the States, trying a bunch of different race cars. And then when I was 14, I hopped into Mazda Miata for the first time. Just learned how to roll momentum into a corner. Mazda Miata doesn't have much horsepower, so it's all about uh, entry speed and, and getting off the brake pedal and trusting that the car is going to stick. So it teaches you very good habits, especially as you transition into faster race cars. So then I hopped in a Radical SR3, which is a miniature prototype car, proper race car. It's got downforce, so I learned how to now drive a car with some, some ground effects and downforce. And I had the best of both worlds from that point, a street car with no power to a race car with downforce and decent power. And from there I went F4 racing. Did that for three years, won a championship in 2020 on the F4 West Coast Series, and uh, tried to go to the National Series, ran out of money, as a lot of drivers do. So I've kind of made my home in sports car racing now. Did the last two years in a, a touring car series, won a championship last year in the TC America Series. And now we're out here uh, driving Toyotas, getting ready for the 2024 Toyota GR Cup Series. This test is important to just get seat time, see how the car responds, how it feels. Um, just make sure everything's nutted and bolted and, and ready to go. That way we're not learning during the first race weekend, uh, trying to do minor details. We're trying to get those all ironed out here at Button Willow. That way, going into Sonoma in two weeks, we're ready to go and we can hit the ground running. Being a third generation racing driver, there's definitely some big shoes to fill. My grandfather was a F1 driver, IndyCar driver, Trans Am driver, top level sports car racer. He raced 24 hours of Le Mans, Indy 500. My dad raced Indy 500, 24 hours of Le Mans. So yeah, definitely some big races, big shoes to fill, but it's an honor really. There's not many families with that, that three generations of racing drivers. And uh, especially at the Indy 500, which is my goal to, to race one day. So to be able to get that, it's it would be very special for me and my family. But for now, I'm just trying to take it one step at a time and, and have a successful year of racing this year um, and just capitalize on as much as I can, learn as much as I can, and hopefully that'll that'll launch me to the next the next rank. My biggest success on the racetrack has got to be last year winning the 2023 TC America Championship. It was not easy by any means. It came down to the last lap of the last race, and my rival and I were battling up until the third to last corner. We were side by side, and he made a mistake, and I was able to capitalize on that and, and win. So the whole year was, was tough battle, side by side racing. We had car problems, we had bad luck at times, but we were able to stay consistent enough to win the championship. The team worked extremely hard and they gave me a, a good race car every single time we got in the car and that gave us good results to win the championship. So I had known about Radford uh, for a while, obviously since the Bondurant days, it's a very well-known school and since the transition, I knew it became Radford, but I never saw myself working especially in Arizona. I'd never thought I'd live in Arizona again. But from the Ferrari movie, I met Rob Knight, one of the lead instructors, and we got to talking about Radford and how he enjoyed working at the school. And I just so happened to be at a part of my life where I needed a transition. I was living in California, and I was out of work, and I needed somewhere to work, and I knew of Radford. So I asked Rob if I could get the chief instructor, Danny Bullock's info, and reached out and hit it off and moved to Arizona and started working about a year and a half ago so it's been great i love working at radford it's my favorite school that i've worked for it's the fourth one that i've worked for and it's been a pleasure to, to instruct there being on the racetrack you 
start to develop your skills, you hone your skills, and that will give you some confidence. And then instruction, you're talking to people every day, you have to get up in front of a classroom and, and talk about the techniques. So you just get good at talking in front of people and, and getting comfortable at that. So it's developed me into who I am today, um, and it's definitely grown my confidence by being active in racing and coaching. Racing is very expensive, and, and to be able to get out to a racetrack is not easy. It's not something that people have in their backyards. Being able to work at a racing school and be active at a racetrack almost every day has definitely helped just keep me sharp behind the wheel. We're, we're always demoing the exercises, and we're spending a lot of time showing the students on track how to do things. So that is for sure beneficial, and explaining just kind of hammers the techniques into your muscle memory. You're always talking about what to do and you just remind yourself that these are the ways to drive a car and doing it every single day you get quite comfortable and good at it. I think the biggest challenge for me behind the wheel is, is mental focus and fatigue. I mean, it's not easy to drive a race car at speed for a, a long duration of time. It's, it seems easy because we drive a car every day and it's very comfortable, but when you're in the heat of the moment, especially in a battle, these cars aren't built necessarily for comfort. It's hot, it's it's extremely physical, and you are mentally focused the entire time. For us, it's 40 minutes. So uh, minimizing mistakes is tricky, and not losing mental focus is extremely important. We talk a lot about how to use your vision to place the car accurately, because uh, in an easy way to put it, where you're looking is where the car is gonna go. It's all behind your focus. So we're trying to train ourselves to look not only where we want the car to go, but elevate your vision, which will allow you to trust the car as you start to pick up speed because things are starting to come at you slower and you can start to put a plan in place. So it's very overlooked, but your eyes are your biggest tool in the race car because it's gonna tell you exactly where to place the car. When you're going through a corner, there's a proper line that you wanna be on. And if you're looking elsewhere, you're gonna be offline, either on a dirty part of the racetrack or maybe just driving a, a tighter radius and you're gonna to have to slow more dramatically than you would if you were looking for the racing line and being accurate with your car positioning. So we talk a lot about vision, how to use your vision. We go through a lot of exercises, training the eyes, especially in the skid pad. When you're putting a car in a slide, you need to be looking at where you want that car to end up. That way you're not looking for an obstacle. The other thing we talk about is weight transfer, how to manage the weight uh, with your inputs. We have a steering wheel, a brake pedal, and a gas pedal, and all three of those things shift weight. So where you're placing the weight in the car will be where the grip is essentially because you are starting to grow the contact patch of the tire as it, as it sinks into the ground and that's giving you grip on that tire. So the brake transfers the weight forward, the gas pedal transfers it to the rear and depending on what you want the car to do, that's where you're going to put it. So we talk a lot about trail braking which is using the brake pedal to actually get the car to rotate. As you go into a corner, you're braking hard and it transfers weight forward but you're slowly releasing the brake pedal to help roll momentum into the corner but not sacrifice all that front grip you still have some brake on to keep that nose of the car pinned so we talk a lot about that how to manage that weight and that's going to really help the car's performance